Whenever you're on a Minecraft server, everything you do is going to trigger something known as an event. For example, if I place down this block, there will be a block place event. And if I break it, there is a block break event. And there's many, many more, basically meaning that you can listen to whatever happens on your server and then actually add in your own code to interact with that in a certain way. It is very important that you already know the basics of Java programming. If you don't, then no worries. I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by starting a free trial on Skillshare. A link to that can be found in the description and in the pinned comment. Here I am within the workspace for the last video, basically just having a simple Hello World plugin. And I'm wanting to add in a new folder within our project so I can have all of our handlers or features within that folder. So for example, I can right click, go to new, package, and I'm gonna call this handlers. Now let's say I want to listen for different type of torch events. For example, when a torch is placed or broken, so I'm going to make a new file in here where I can go to new Java class and I'm going to call this torch handler. Now all of my torch specific logic is going to go inside of this class. And I'm also wanting this class to be self-sufficient so I don't have to register the events outside of this class. The events will register themselves. Now by registering events, I basically mean it's going to tell Spigot that certain methods in this class should be ran whenever an event happens. But before we do that, we have to have this class implement the listener interface. So make sure you're importing this from org.bucket.event, and then we can create our own constructor here. So public torch handler. And within here, I am then going to say bucket with a capital B dot get plugin manager dot register events. Now register events is going to take in two parameters as we can see here. The first one is the listener. The second one will be our plugin. Now because the torch handler class implements listener, we can simply pass in this. But for the plugin, we need that from our constructor parameters. Now my plugin class is called Warnoff Key Tutorial, so I'm going to have that here. But I'm going to name this plugin, and then I can pass this in right here. So basically, the constructor of this class is going to register all the events inside of it. And we're going to go ahead and create our own events here in a second. But let's go ahead and make a new instance of the Torch Handler class. So within the on enable, I can say new Torch Handler. I can pass in this. With this approach, if I ever want to disable the torch handler, I can simply comment this out or remove it, and all the functionality inside that class is now gone, including the registration of events. But obviously we want that, so I'm going to undo this here. And now going back into the torch handler, we can listen for different types of events. So I can say at event handler, and then underneath this, we can create our own method. I can call this public void, and we can name this whatever we want. In this case, I'll say on torch place, but the parameter that is used needs to be very specific. This has to be the exact event that you want to listen to. In this case, I want to listen for the block place event. I'm going to call this event, and now this method here is going to be ran every single time a block is placed. So let's take a look at what is inside of the event object. I can say event dot, and here we have get block, set canceled, is canceled, the player that placed the block, and a bunch of other options. For now, let's take a look at get block. So I can create a block object here, make sure that this is from org.bucket.block and i'm going to set this equal to event.getBlock. now what i'm going to do is if this is not a torch i want to return so if block.getType, which returns a material which is an enum if this is not equal to material.torch then i want to return now a material as you might see here is going to contain every single item and block within the game and so we can specify that right here in this case, I simply just want to check for a torch though. Now this means that after this if statement, we know for sure that the player placed a torch. So now right here, I'm going to log to the console, bucket with a capital B, dot get logger, dot info, a torch was placed. Let's go ahead and compile and run this and let's see how it works so far. So I can go to build, build artifacts, and then build. Now while that's happening, it's important for me to note that if you followed along from episode one, I did change the start.bat script you could find the updated script in the description. Basically, I have a start label right here. And then afterwards, I am jumping back to that start label. Because beforehand, when I stopped the server, the console would close. But now it's just going to jump back to the top of the script, go ahead and copy the new plugin in, and then also run the server again. To show an example of this, here, I can go ahead and stop the server. And then here we see we are going to the start, and then we're copying the new file and starting back up the server, so I don't have to keep rerunning start.bat. All right, so I'm now on the server with our plugin, and if I place a grass block, nothing actually happens in the console, as you can see here. But if I go ahead and place a torch, then we see a torch was placed. 
So that means that the block place event is running and our code is accurately checking to see if the block is a torch or not. Now let's go back into our IDE. And now I want to make it so whenever a torch is placed, it now becomes a diamond block. But I also am doing this to demonstrate another important concept about events, which is going to be priority. So events happen at five different stages of priority. We're going to have lowest, low, normal, which is default. So if we don't specify a priority, then normal is used. For example, this is going to be a normal priority. We then have high and highest. Now highest happens last, so it has the final say. Therefore, it is the highest priority. And there is another option, which is called monitor, but that one's slightly different, and I'll explain that one later on. So now I'm wanting to make it so whenever a torch is placed, it's actually going to be changed into a diamond block. And right now this event handler is on the normal priority, so we need to make another event handler that is going to be on a lower priority, either low or lowest. Either one works. And it technically does not matter where you place this, it could be below this, or it could be above. I typically like to place them on the order of the priority, just so it's easier for me to find things. So I can say at event handler, public void on torch place. I can then say block place event. And now we're going to get an error because we have two methods with the same exact name. So before I fix that, I want to change this event handler here to be on the low priority. So I can add in parentheses after the event handler, and I can say priority equals low. Now I'm going to change this name to be on torch place underscore low. And then I can change this one to on torch place underscore normal. This makes it clear that we have multiple event handlers with the same event, but on different priorities. And it also makes it much more clear which one is which. So what I want to do here is I want to see if it is a torch. And if so, I'm going to change this block type. And I'm going to do this in a little bit more of a compact form. So let's first check to see if it's a torch. So if event dot get block dot get type is exactly equal to a torch, I then want to say event dot get block dot set type. And of course, here we can pass in whatever we want. In this case, I want a diamond block. So now let's go ahead and run this. So now if I place down a torch, it changes into a diamond block, but we also do not see anything in the console. If we go back, here we have a console log, and this is the same exact function as we had before, but now it's not working. The reason for that is because once the normal priority is hit with this function right here, the low priority has already changed this block to a diamond block. It's no longer a torch. And so this is a good example of priority in action. Now, I want to quickly mention that monitor is something that is happening after everything else, and you cannot change anything at that point. That is basically to monitor or track anything that actually happens, and that it's after the action has already gone through on the server. So for example, if we change this to monitor, it wouldn't actually work when it comes to changing it to a down block because everything has already happened. So I'm going to use control Z to undo that. And one last thing I want to show you is going to be canceling events and how that works. Let's say that instead of making this a diamond block, I just want to cancel the event. I can say event dot set canceled true. And we also have access to event dot is canceled. Now canceling an event does not mean that the future event priorities will not be ran because they still will be ran. If I cancel this here, this will still be ran. Now there are two ways to avoid this. You can manually check if it was canceled. So if event dot is canceled, then return. But there's an easier way to check and that is going to be adding in these parentheses again. You can say ignore canceled equals true. That basically means that this function here is not going to be ran if it was previously canceled on a lower priority. So this right here is a normal priority, and we are canceling it here. Let me actually change this function here to make it very obvious what the result is. I'm going to comment out the block and the if statement here, and I'm going to change this console log to a block was placed. So this will now be ran on any block that is placed on the normal priority if it was not canceled on the lowest or the low priority. Let's go ahead and build and run this. So now back on the server, if I place a block, nothing actually happens. It's immediately canceled. And that's because we are canceling it right here, which means the event is not going to actually happen on the real server. And this is how servers are able to protect our spawns or other areas like that. But if I place any other block, we actually see that. We also see a block was placed in the console. So what's happening here is because I was placing a torch at first, we're setting is canceled to true on the low priority, which is right here. But whenever the default event is ran, which is on the normal priority, we are ignoring anything that is canceled on a previous priority. So a torch is not going to have this method run right here, which is why we do not see anything in the console whenever we place any torches right here. But every other block is not going to be canceled by default, and so this will run. Now, I want to show you the documentation for Spigot, but it is a brighter website, so be careful of your eyes real quick. 
Here we have the official documentation. A link to this can be found in the description. And right here we have for handling events and triggered code, see the event package. If you click on that, you're going to see a list of all possible events. We have block events, enchantment events, player events, and many more. Let's take a quick look at player events. Here we have bed enter, bed leave. If we do a search, we can search for player join. So whenever a player joins, there is player quit. So whenever a player quits, and many other events here. As you can probably expect, every single thing that could happen in a Minecraft server is going to have an event attached to it that you can listen to. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.